Taxes used. Great candidates. They are slower growing, so it takes a couple years for them to completely come back. But again, if they're overgrowing an area, you can take them back if you don't have deer problems. You can see what it might look like when you renew a prune, how open it is, but slowly but surely that's going to fill back in. And over a few years, you're going to have like a new hedge. And that's really more how you'd like to keep it, open, so you have growth going all the way through the plant. Bayberry, excellent plant for renewal pruning. You know, how, how brutal is that? Just whack, and it, it will come back nicely. And then, of course, you can come back and you can do some target pruning to shape it up or do whatever you'd like, but you can let it stay natural. You don't have to shear it into a ball. Uh, Inkberry holly, this is a native holly, okay, it's very popular, people, oh, it grows great in the drought, they see it in the parking lots. It always ends up looking like this in my experience. Uh, they tend to shed their older leaves every fall, they only keep their newest leaves on top, and so that's just terrible. These are great candidates. This time of year, take them down below the window, nothing but sticks. They'll come right back. They'll be great. It'll be like you have a brand new plant for the next few years. Japanese holly. These get treated a lot like boxwood. People shear them tight. You look inside them. They're covered with scale, mites, and no growth on the inside. This could be cut way down, just to little stubs, and it'll come back and then keep it thin. Keep the air and light moving through it. Be brutal. Here's that picture you saw before. There's what that Japanese holly hedge looked like. You could not see the windows. It's cut back to little stumps, brand new, one year, okay? That is a value, not only because you didn't have to pull all that out, but also because you saved these plants. They deserved a second chance. Now they could be maintained at a lower height. We don't have to let them get up too large. Chinese hollies, good candidates. So that includes Burfords, Osmanthus, which is like the Goshiki. This is Gulf Tide. Good candidates. Take them down. Abelia is a plant that flowers on new wood. If they're getting too large, take them down. They'll grow back. They'll be covered with flowers. You can see that. Akuba japonica, another plant that responds well, but the deer like. So if you've got a huge Akuba, and you end up cutting it down low and you have deer, it may never get large again. <laughs> if you see winter burn on it, something like that, just take it off. Akuba responds very well to that. Photinia, here's a plant that responds well to renewal pruning, but it's a plant that has difficulties in our area. People tend to shear them, and the more you shear them, they tend to get a, a, a leaf spot disease, which is very serious for Photinia. So either try to let your Photinia go or try to change to a different plant. They, they, they have many difficulties. Trying to manage the disease with fungicides, not, not very practical. Azaleas, it was already brought up, but basically, you know, prune them after they flower. But if you want to renewal prune them, do it this time of year. Just, just do it. Euonymus. I mean, here's a plant that is on, I think, the non-native invasive species list. A lot of people like them. They have variegated foliage some. They're, they can be very pretty. The deer like them also. They chomp them. Scale like them also. Some of these things are just infested with scale. People spend a lot of time and money spraying them. If I had an Euonymus like this and I wanted to keep it and it was covered with scale, I would cut it down almost to the ground. And I would take all that infested foliage, Throw it away. Don't put it in your compost pile. Throw it away. The plant will regrow with clean foliage, and it'll be years before it gets infested again. These also get galls that you can, uh, uh, you know, cut out if you can get them down low enough and get rid of them, and you'll get nice new growth. They respond very well. Juniper. It's a plant that you can prune. And you want to try to recognize that the lower growth on a juniper is the older growth, and that's what it doesn't regrow from. It regrows from the newer growth. So be careful when you prune. Don't cut too far back. Don't cut to dead wood on a juniper, or you're not going to see a whole lot of regrowth. Viburnums are good candidates for renewal. All types of uh, viburnums, mahonias and barberries, all excellent. Japanese pieris. Although they can be renewal pruned, they're very slow to recover. I don't recommend it. 
If you have a problem with a Pieris, it might be time for a new Pieris. If you have a lot of patience, you can try. But if it looks really beautiful, don't think that you're going to get that back in a couple years. Pieris can be very slow to grow, and they also suffer from the Phytophthora that uh, rhododendrons suffer from. So uh, they're kind of on the border. They will grow back, but very slowly. And there's your rhododendron. You know, you can bite the bullet and cut them down. They will come back. So it depends on, you know, if there's an ax murderer hiding on your porch, you might want to cut them back. But if they look beautiful and they're behind a bench, you might want to just keep them as they are. There's your barberry. Cherry laurel, good candidates. Again, a lot of people shear these. They really shouldn't be sheared. You should try hand pruning them. They do a lot better when you hand prune them. And if they get too large this time of year, you can cut them back very low, and they will regrow nicely. Yeah. Well, what about the barberry? How far back do you want to take it? How far back can you cut a barberry? As far back as you would like. You can do it now, absolutely. Take them down to the ground. Make them skinnier. Make them lower. They'll grow back very nicely. They'll reward you. Yeah. Yeah, sky pencil holly. It's a really thin, narrow Japanese holly. And uh, some of them are not as stout as we would like them to be. And I think what you need to do on them is really shear them up tightly all the time. And you'll get that lots of multi-branching, and that's what's going to make them tough. But you need to do it often. You know, you need to, every time they start to grow, shear them, force more branching, force more branching. Absolutely. Mugo pine, this isn't really renewal, but they can get pretty big. They're a dwarf plant, but they get pretty huge. And if you want to try to keep them in check, pinching back their candles, you know, at, at the spring growth spurt is the time to do it. Okay, so if you get in there, it's a sticky operation. Uh, keep some WD-40 on hand because you're, 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 pruners will get gummed up pretty quickly and uh, don't wear your good pruning suit when you do that. Thank you.